Welcome to ID the Future, a podcast about intelligent design and evolution. On this episode of ID the Future, we're highlighting a short clip of senior fellow Dr. Paul Nelson talking about his meeting with the late, famous defender of Darwinism, Stephen Jay Gould. Here's Gould. This is one of his papers from American Scientist where he makes this argument. And he says, I can show you that evolution has occurred by looking at single objects. Evolution, after all, on Earth took place over a very long time indeed. No one observed it directly. So to know that it happens, he said, we have to look at what he calls single objects, single living things. And he says, we can know that evolution has happened by the imperfections and oddities that life shows. Because any perfection, he said, might have been created, notice the verb there, as we find it. So what he's saying is, you know, God could make optimal things, and that wouldn't reveal their history. But if we find imperfections and oddities, that gives us a historical signal that points to evolution. He goes on, he says, this principle of imperfection was Darwin's most common guide. In fact, he elevates it to the standard of a principle and says, I named my book, The Panda's Thumb, after this principle of historical reasoning. Well, let's go back to the panda. And there it is. There's the pseudo-thumb. Now, if you count the digits here, there are five of them. So it's getting an extra digit from a greatly enlarged wrist bone, the radial sesamoid. And in this little hairless groove here, that's where the panda holds the bamboo. Now, in March 1990, uh, my wife was interviewing for a fellowship at Harvard, and I was her chauffeur in the Boston-Cambridge area. I had a day free. And as a graduate student, I had been evaluating this argument from Gould, and friends had encouraged me. They said, you really should go talk to him. So I did that. I made an appointment, and uh, I met him after one of his classes, and we walked back to his office in the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard to talk about this. And I had one question that I really wanted to put to him, and it was the following. How did he know that this structure was suboptimal? After all, a claim of suboptimality or imperfection is something that you have to support with evidence. If I tell you that a Formula One race car is better for getting a load of groceries home than my Honda minivan, that's something that we can evaluate. In fact, it's false. A Honda minivan is much better for getting a load of groceries home from the store than a Formula One race car, which is optimized to go around a track. So I asked Gould, one-on-one, sitting there in his office, what's the evidence that the thumb is actually suboptimal? And he said, Paul, just look at it. Just look at it. It's obvious. Well, the fact is, it's not just obvious, as I'll come to in just a moment. Anyway, remember why he thinks this is important. He says, this is the proof. That's a pretty strong claim. This is the proof of evolution, these odd solutions. But is it suboptimal? Well, let's lay aside the theological problem for a moment. I went into the natural history literature on the panda, and invariably, in every case, when an observer was looking at that structure, it was doing its job remarkably well. There is no carnivore that is as dexterous as a panda. This book by Richard Perry, an observer of pandas, points out that pandas can hold a single piece of sugar cane or a slice of bread. They can pick up a tin dish, like a dog dish, in their forelimbs. Ming, a female, could hold a spoon and eat soup with it, or she could pick up things as small as little Neko candy wafers. In fact, the only team that ever actually looked at the thumb, a Japanese research team, published a paper in Nature in 1999 where they actually looked at how the thing functioned. And I won't bore you with the details. It's available in the literature. Their conclusion was that the way that the thumb worked was remarkable such that pandas could manipulate objects with great dexterity. And they concluded, we have shown that the hand of the giant panda has a much more refined grasping mechanism than has been suggested in previous models. So when Stephen Gould himself, one-on-one with me in his office at Harvard, had a chance to give me the evidence for his claim in his book that the panda's thumb was suboptimal, he punted. And what he said is it's just obvious. Well, the reason we have science is that things are not just obvious. 
For more information about scientific challenges to Darwin's theory of evolution, please visit discovery.org slash CSC. Thanks for listening. Music on ID the Future comes courtesy of composer Yuri Momchur. Visit www.yuriproductions.com and check out his latest CD, In the Harbor. This program was recorded by Discovery Institute's Center for Science and Culture. Discovery President is Bruce Chapman. ID the Future Managing Editor is Robert Crowther. And the producer is Keith Bennett. ID the Future and ID Science in the News is copyright Discovery Institute 2006. For more information, visit www.discovery.org or www.idthefuture.com. 